Welcome to the PRFFP, the podcast showcasing the films and the directors of the Party Room Film Festival. This week's guests directed Life, The Wet Bandits Pitch Meeting, and Chronicles of Light, Chapter 4. Please welcome Tanner. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, man. Welcome back. Uh, you're a veteran of the podcast, so we won't waste your time with any of the uh, frivolities. Tell me a little bit about first reactions to getting to choose your category this past year. Honestly, I had no idea what to do. <laughs> it's just like, like, oh, like, okay, I finally a year where I can kind of hopefully do something I want to. And mm -hmm. but you know, against Andrew, so I didn't really know what to do. We kind of pitched back a couple ideas back and forth, and I know Andrew is like was like big into playing Red Dead Two at the time, so he's like Western. So I'm like, hey, what about Western? And he's mm -hmm. like, well, that that may work for you. And part of the reason I did pick this was because my parents just bought a big fifty acre farm, so mm -hmm. plenty of land. And Andrew's like, well, that may work for you, but I'm in DC, so not really a Western area. So I'm like, yeah, probably a good idea. And then I don't think we just didn't talk about it for a while. And eventually he just messaged me and was like, hey, what about best movie parody? And I'm like, sure, that'll work. Really, because that's easy. You can add that into a film, no problem. And of course, he went with a reference to Amadeus. Tell me what yours is referencing. Obviously, it's referencing like Christian fantasy, but would you say it's more Lord of the Rings, more Narnia? What are your thoughts? Um, I'd say probably more Narnia with the hint of Lord of the Rings. I mean, I kind of looked at, I guess when I we decided that, I kind of looked at more as like a specific thing was supposed to be the movie reference. That's kind of why I did like the Anakin thing scene mm -hmm. and did the, um, and the kind of the Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure thing at the end. But also along with that, kind of a fantasy, which that came from, that idea came from a different thing than the movie reference. Tell me a little bit about initial reactions to your actor. Uh, Matt Stice and then the prop and the line from this past year it was pretty much ready for anyone because pretty much whoever it was would have done the same thing because just mm -hmm. like a video chat just because of my distance from everyone so I was mm -hmm. excited to have Matt and I think he nailed the role of Gilbert the Green and I'm hoping he'll reprise it in the future <laughs> he did a really good job he did a good job with it that, ju that just made me really excited um because obviously, you know, we started in chapter four of the Chronicles of Light, um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about your thoughts on the prop and the line, you know, the Nickelback CD and yeah. then a red sun rises. Blood has been spilled yeah. this night. Yeah. So the prop, I was shocked. First off, I did not see that coming, <laughs> to be honest, like, out of left field for sure. I was kind of like, okay, great. Now I have to figure out how to use this in a fantasy movie. So coming up with the whole like uh, Gilbert has to is like, you know, just like I'm listening to this band and they're really cool and they're not, but that's the joke. And then of course I threw Trevor under the bus in my film and told him that <laughs> Gilbert said, hey, this guy named Trevor, he he told me about this. But then thank you actually, for doing that, by the way. <laughs> as for the line that's actually kind of became the inspiration for the whole movie mm. was just like hearing that was the line i'm like okay it just kind of brought me back into thinking about lord of the rings and the whole fantasy world so i really built the whole movie around from that line and that's why it's like the first line in the whole movie mm. so like everything stemmed from that line in my ideas well, that leads perfectly into the next uh, question. You know, I'm looking for a general timeline on, you know, when this idea came to fruition, like when that light bulb moment happened. You said that like the Christian fantasy genre, like that theme kind of popped in whenever you heard the line. Tell me a little bit more um, mm -hmm. about the next steps and then uh, scripting, casting, shooting editing yeah so kind of writing it was i don't know it just came to me like i've never i've honestly i've never really written any of my films before outside of mm -hmm. technically i did the first two for prf but in college i didn't mm -hmm. write any of my films like zach <laughs> and Josiah did that for me because i'm not a writer my aaron winorowski was with me in my writing class we had a journal like journalism professor and it was not great so i didn't get <laughs> didn't really learn what i needed to so, yeah 
but I don't know, this time around, it just kind of, the ideas flew, came up with the idea of the Council of Wizards, because, like, uh, kind of like Gandalf the Grey, and then the creator, kind of like Aslan, and that idea. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, I knew I wanted, I needed to be, use people around here to film it, so that's kind of the idea of, like, kind of got a little bit of a Shazam from DC Comics, kind of that idea in there, <laughs> because I love that movie. I just think it's funny, a 10-year-old becoming an adult superhero. It's hilarious. Yeah. And so that was inspiration. So I don't know, the script just kind of came together. I'm like, if I'm doing a council wizard, I need to base them around colors, kind of like Gandalf the Grey. So I came up with RGB, red, green, yeah. blue. So I do lighting at church. So that's kind of inspiration there. Love it. Just, Love it. And, you know, RGB lighting makes white. White is, like, pure and clean. Mm -hmm. Red is evil. It just, it just fits. So, came up with names to match the colors, Benson the blue, Gilbert the green, Ronnie the red, and it mm. worked. So, once I wrote it, I, um, I guess a little bit of backstory of my actors. Caden and Easton, I work with their mom, and their uncle's my boss. So, like, I've known them for pretty much a long time, and I've just gotten closer to them coming home after college. So, they were on board, their brother Trey was on board, and then their cousins, when I told them I was doing a film last summer, for what bandits they're like dude in the future if you do anything what count us in so mm -hmm. hunter and caleb i got them involved and so it's fun casting process like people i know already and everyone was totally on board 100 percent. i think one of the things like obviously you know lighting guy love the whole lighting wizards you know rgb wizards but i think what i love even more about your film this year was just that we finally got to see tanner perkins in action year yeah. one you kind of got screwed by the category it was still great but you know what are you going to do with that category and then year two you just had a bunch of people cancel on you but this year we finally got to see you in action man yeah it was great i'm kind of yeah so this is the first time i've really like made a film i was passionate about so that really helped i mean let's get into this why start with chapter four so that kind of came about more as a, just a joke mm -hmm. so that when zach came up to film kill happy we were discussing i'm like dude like as i let him read the script for it and i was just like i need to come up with a name for this and we were just like bouncing names back and forth and we finally landed on the chronicles of light and i'm like dude i should pull george lucas and just be like book four <laughs> <laughs> and we went with it and like and it kind of works because there could be a prequel based on how even the story begins so that's the whole reason just to be funny and now everyone up here wants me to make a one two and three after i do five and six but <laughs> we'll, we'll see don't feel like you have to do it you know you don't want to yeah. oversaturate the market or anything yeah i know i know i'm just kind of doing that like oh, i just wish i did one <laughs> <laughs> i have a three chapter story in my head i could probably do I put probably enough material to do like one prequel, not three. And and don't even make it number three. Make it number two or one so that there's this big block in the center. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about pulling a George Lucas. I mean, you even have the text crawl at the beginning of the film. So perfect. Yeah, that was um, that idea, kind of. He was like, dude, you should do a crawl at the beginning. And of course it had to be really quick because of how long the movie is, but yeah, it worked. Tell me real quick, did the pizza man deliver a single slice of pizza? No, it was a, it was a whole pizza. I just... So, this, yeah, the story behind, I guess, the Gilbert scene kind of is... Mm -hmm. Matt, Matt did a bunch of takes, so I have, like, actually extra footage that I didn't use. But I just, like... I kind of, you know, like, Amazon, when they drop a package off, they don't ring your doorbell. So I needed... And I kind of wanted to build a little bit of suspense, too. Like, oh, no, someone's come for Gilbert. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, can you, you know, like eat pizza or something? Like Matt's like, yeah, sure. I'll just have pizza for lunch that day. And so <laughs> he just made sure he had an extra piece of pizza and he did it. <laughs> I, I love that. Like when he's eating pizza, you like leave it in for just a little bit. So he goes, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had some more takes of that. We'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tell me. So. Gilbert the Green in the back, you know, he has this lamp, and the lamp is that actually green or is that color corrected? Tell me a little bit about that. I think Matt put a green bulb in there because, yeah, he put it because it's all raw footage. 
So yeah, Matt put a green bulb in there. Mm. Um, speaking of Matt being the Gilbert the Green, did you and Sam collude at all between your films? Because he, in Sam's film, Matt was Senior Verde, you know, Mister Green, and in your film, he's Gilbert the Green. So, are these the same characters? Uh, no, that's a total <laughs> chance. Although we did, Matt did tell me he was doing that, and I think I don't think he wore the same shirt, but he contemplated wearing the same shirt. So, I have to go back and watch Sam's again to make sure he didn't wear the same shirt. <laughs> yeah, there was discussions about that a little bit, but I like not to the extent where I, I knew what Sam was doing. I, I love how you discussed why red light seems kind of darker than blue light. Um, and yeah, obviously it's because like you know, red light has you know these longer wavelengths. It's not as much energy, but I don't know. It just makes me excited. I like light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually there's a, there's like a whole cut paragraph i have to take out because of time kind of going deeper into that and be like yeah this is a little boring <laughs> but for the average person and it <laughs> time, so. okay well i want the director's cut i want to hear all about it all right i'll have to dig it up and send it to you <laughs> um, i'm pretty sure part of that too is i kept watching the line so i just <laughs> cut it so rodney the red he isn't actually evil he was just persuaded by the duke right Yes. Kind of kind of a very you know, Anakin and Emperor type thing as inspiration there a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um why does Gilbert the Green not send any champions to fight? Um, main reason he's forced to stay in Kentucky. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of the whole line of like, why don't he, he say, he says like, why, why don't I teleport to you? I'm like, yeah, it's too dangerous. Mm -hmm. Cause I can't film him. So I'm not going to waste my time with all the green screen stuff for that. Yeah. Keep it contained. But. That's a really funny answer. Cause he's in Kentucky. <laughs> See the wizards are, they're, they're assigned at, well, at least the two of us, cause Rodney turned on us, but we're assigned at specific areas of this world. Me, Ohio, Gilbert, Kentucky. Yeah. Okay for now, but yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about the uh, direction that you gave them for the fight scene. I told them to basically come up with their own fight choreography. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to worry too much about it. And I knew they're, they're creative enough and, you know, they're brothers so they can, and cousins so they can all fight each other like normal. So mm -hmm. basically, like, we split them up. I put, let Trey and Caden do their thing and figure out their moves. And I let Hunter and Caleb do their thing. Fun mm -hmm. fact, you know, Caleb has a shield. Originally, he had a Star Wars uh, lightsaber. Oh, really? One of those, one of those two hundred dollar ones from Disney World. And oh wow! First, first take of their fight, we broke it. <laughs> <Pick up yes. laughs> so we had to like. Oh it. no! Like, yeah. So. I don't know. We're talking about going to Disney next summer, so I might have to get him one. We'll see. Yeah. But um gotta reimburse him for that. Yeah, so but no big deal. He wasn't like overly upset, but was just like, oh man. And so that's where we switched to the shield. Because like mm -hmm. at least that won't break. T tell me the I mean, a blue Captain America shield, what is that from? Did y'all spray paint that? What is that? Oh, that's just the way it came. It's like the winter soldier version. Like in oh. the movie, I know, it kinda, it's kind of weird. It doesn't really look like the movie shield, mm -hmm. what it's like supposed to be. Because like in the Winter Soldier, it's if you look at it, it's like more faded and doesn't really have color on it. Mm. That's kind of what it's representing. Tell me why you went with the powers that you did. You alluded to it earlier. You were kind of uh, referencing Shazam with one, and then the other has like super strength. Tell me a little bit about your thought process for those. Yeah. So I think. For Kate, that's when they give him super strength because easy power, and and I think I really I said you know the whole line like strength of Samson, wisdom of Solomon, courage of David. That's kind of like Shazam in this way that I think like, you know Shazam actually stands for something like the strength of Samson. Uh, like, I don't really remember something you know 
Zeus was mm-hmm. Zeus, like the different the gods. So of course to make it Christian, I just gave them different abilities of former people in the past from the Bible. Mm-hmm. And then and for Easton, it's just like, well, kind of like Shazam will become an adult. So that's cool. That's really that's cool. I didn't pick that. up on that. I don't think I realized that was part of Shazam's bit that he that's really cool. The transition scene between older Easton and younger Easton, that was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Like it goes blue and he like puff of smoke goes blue, like dips out and everything. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I knew I knew I wanted to do it. Like I knew I wanted to do some kind of like dissolve. So I you know, I had them stand in a spot, Easton first, and I just did like a pan from his feet to his head. Then I did the same thing with Hunter. And I just threw them in, threw in a dissolve, a flash to blue. And then I just went online and found like a free smoke effect and mm-hmm. just overlaid it. So and it turned out it turned out better than I thought it would. It, it's like, it's a simple way to do it, but it's a very well done is the thing. Like you use it very well. Um, all right. I'm going to call you out here. I'm sorry about it. I'm going to call you out here. Yeah. The... Of course I forgive you. That's a pickup shot, right? It's got to be. Yeah. So what happened there was kind of just like the placement of the actors. It's basically like a really weird cut no matter what. And the way I said the line in the original take was not good. And I was like, I was here at home. It's like getting frustrated. Like, I don't know how to do this. Like, this is going to be awkward no matter what I do. So I decided the easiest way was to do a pickup shot. So I just threw on my shirt and there's a park like two blocks from me. Went out in the park, out on the hiking trail, like praying no one's around to see me talking to my phone. And so I just, <laughs> like, I just held my phone up in front of my face and just started walking and filmed the line. And I yeah. was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I'm still on the ground, but next shot I was standing and I'm like, shoot, I didn't get up. <laughs> so that was the pickup shot for that. Um. <clears throat> so Rodney the Red says that he and Caleb are going to go fight the Duke. Are they going to do this on their own? Is there going to be another council meeting to def- uh, where all the wizards will come together and their champions as white light? What's the plan? Oh man, I so I've actually outlined. I did this last Sunday at Applebee's. <laughs> 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 Yeah, and after we, we we saw the youth. I've been I've been playing this in my head for a while, but I finally wrote mm-hmm. it down. We went to, after we had our vision night at church, like our congregational meeting, and I went with the youth to Applebee's, and Kid and I we just sat down and we just talked about it, and we outlined the next two movies. So, as to answer your question, I will say, to start, Rodney and Caleb will be going off to fight the Duke by themselves, mm. but things happen. <laughs> so stay tuned. All right. Let's say you had the budget of like a million dollars, $25 million. Who in your mind would you get to play the the Duke? Ooh. Hmm. Also the creator, while I'm thinking about it. I mean the creator, Liam Mason. He just got <laughs> that voice. You know? Perfect. 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 Yeah, you know Aslan. I think he's perfectly cast as Aslan in those films, so he'd be a great creator. As for the Duke, hmm. I'm trying to think of like who's like a really great villain actor. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Juan Carlo Esposito. He's a good one. Ooh, yeah, he'd be good. Uh, James Earl Jones. You know, he has that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, but I also don't think too much because they might give away something. So. Yeah, fair enough. (laughs) Yeah. All right, tell me. Again, lighting guy, so excited. Tell me. We know about RGB lighting and RGB color mixing. Is there also CMY wizards as well? Cyan, magenta, yellow wizards for CMY color mixing? You're going to have to wait and see, buddy. (laughs) All right, okay. Hmm. I don't want to give it too much. Let's just say... Have you thought about that though? Can I can I ask that? I, I've not thought about that. I've thought about like I will say this. I've thought about anti wizards. Hmm. 
And so I haven't really like established what I want to do, but you just gave me the idea for what they are. So I like that idea. Jacob so. contributed. Jacob contributed. Right. You will get a special thanks in the credits of the next film. Yes. <laughs> um well, I don't have a good segue for this. So forgive how terrible this is going to be. But hey, Tanner, do you want to play a mini game with me? Sure. First, unless first you want to hear about my COVID editing. Say it one more time. My co my COVID editing. Yes, Why of course. Late. I'm sorry. Go, I'm sorry yeah. about that. Go ahead. So yeah, let me just run down. So filming process. Filmed all the bedroom scenes in June, when I was watching Katie and Easton when their family went took the like a church trip without them. They were too old to go on the trip. Like the mom's kids director, so kids trip. So I took care of them. And then I filmed all the other stuff pretty much after 4th of July. So anyways, camp's coming up. And I knew that basically my plan was the week after camp, I would spend that Sunday at the church, like just editing all day. Like I'd started a little bit, but like finished the film. But mm -hmm. I got COVID at camp. And I was basically dead. Like I went into church on Sunday, I ran sound, mm -hmm. and I had the worst headache of my life. And I was just praying like, God, please let the pastor be done so I can go home. <laughs> and then I went home and I slept for 16 hours straight. When, you see, I went to work Monday, like felt okay, but didn't feel good enough to edit that night. And Tuesday, I went back to work again, and I left like half the day, <laughs> half the half day at work. Mm -hmm. But finally, got some medication and hit the rebound. And then I had another week of camp. <laughs> so so Jeez, it, just didn't ha it just didn't happen at all. And then so when I finally was like better, home from two camps, I did my editing, it was done. Well, in my experience the past two years, COVID has been the inspiration for my films. <laughs> so may maybe it helped uh, spark something in you. Maybe it helped you. Do you, do you think? Yeah, maybe? maybe? Maybe it helped with the editing process, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry about that, but I'm glad, you know, you made it through it. I'm glad you had the time to edit and everything. And now, a brief word from our sponsors. So what does voting for Trevor mean? It means that you voted for Trevor. Why should you vote Trevor? Because why not? Think about how many Trevors aren't currently on the council and how many would be if you voted for me. Can we really stand to not have Trevor on the council for one more year? Think about what's at stake. Not a whole lot, but still I'd like to be there. You might be asking yourself, what'll change if I vote for Trevor? And I'll tell you that I'll be on the council. That will be the main change. If you vote for Trevor, the average height of the council will be improved dramatically. Voting for Trevor also means that the average handsomeness of the council increases. You should vote for Trevor because he is trustworthy and honorable. This is Dr. Trevor Smith, and I approve this message. Uh, have you listened to the first few episodes of the podcast yet? Uh, yeah, I listened to them all. So. Awesome. Yeah, you're my most loyal fan, man. <laughs> you know how it works. You know, uh, we're just gonna figure out who would win in a fight. I'm gonna, you know, put you up in a few grudge matches, and you just tell me what who you think would win in a fight. First opponent, who do you think would win in a fight? You or Donkey Kong? <laughs> uh, Donkey Kong. I mean, at seven ten, eight hundred pounds. I mean. And a possible gun, like that's, yeah, I mean, that's not good for me. <laughs> Maybe if I if I had like a machine gun, sure, but if I'm just barehanded, no way. Yeah, so, sorry about it, but I, I'm I'm gonna agree with you. I think DK gets that one. Okay, versus our Pokemon of the session, Tanner versus Arbok, Airbok, Arbok. I don't know. I don't know about Pokemon. I, well, I do, and Arbok. Hmm. Again, I'm probably gonna say, I mean, it's way, way less than me, but it's 11 feet tall. Or long, because it's a snake. It is long, yeah. Anyway, 
I think I can beat it. It's long. And with that big, like, cobra neck thing, I can mm-hmm. hide almost behind its head, and it wouldn't even know I'm there. So I can take I can take Garbok. I like that. Take, like, this stealthy approach and kind of hide behind mm-hmm. it. I like that. You're being smart with this. I appreciate that. All right. Tanner versus a bear. <laughs> Nine feet tall. Tanner bounds. It's basically Don- Donkey Kong again. Yeah, probably not. Unless I can just happen to outrun it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have been a good statistic, how fast they are. Yeah. Sorry about it. Let, let's say you can't outrun it. I'm I'm saying you can take the bear. I'll take the bear. All right. Tanner versus Bing Bong from uh, Inside Out. <laughs> oh, I can take Bing Bong. Especially when like, his lower half is made out of cotton candy, it kind of looks like. So... Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> just, if you get him wet, he basically dissolves. Dissolves. Yeah. Kind of also makes me think of um, you know, Scooby Doo Two, the live action one, the cotton candy mm-hmm. glob. Yeah. So. All right, Tanner versus Bob the Tomato. Oh, I like take care of him real fast. <laughs> Tell me how you would do it. How would you do it? I pick him. I pick him up and throw him at a random person, or someone who's got bad jokes. You know. <laughs> so here's something that's like <clears throat> looking it up and everything. Height four inches, weight four pounds. Like that's a really heavy tomato, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, tomato is like, like not even a couple ounces. <laughs> yeah, like that. I mean, that's what it said, but I was like, four pounds for a tomato? Jeez. Got a big um, brain. Uh, yeah, and I guess uh, he probably has like a skeleton in there or something. I don't know. Tanner versus Gonzo. Ooh, I could take him. Yeah? I just twist his nose a little bit. And um, see, Gonzo's a great guy. Like, I just couldn't. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I hate that I put y'all in these grudge matches where you have to confront yourself before you can even confront them. Yeah. But I can but take the, him. I believe you could. All right. Tanner versus George Lucas. <laughs> hey, we're the same height. All right. Five, six. I think I did okay in our lightsaber battles in college. I wasn't definitely not the best, but I mean, if I did a lightsaber match against Curtis, I think I could hold my own. And he's older, so got that going for me. I was about to say, you're 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 a young man. You could take that old guy. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tanner versus another old guy, Moses. I could take him. I mean, he's old. Young Moses, he's a, probably not. He's got a I mean, stick. He got a stick, and a stick can turn into a snake. So there's that. <laughs> I forgot about that actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like he's he's seen the face of God, so that's that's kind of terrifying. But here's the thing: you said that you could take Arbok, which was like an eleven foot snake. That's true. So you could take so you like, could take the Moses snake easily. Yeah, it's definitely could be that hard. So, and the stone tablets, he broke them. He'd just probably trip and drop them. So, yeah, old Moses, I could take. Young Moses, not so much. He killed an Egyptian. Tanner versus Neil Armstrong. Yeah, he's from Ohio. Just like me. Is he really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. And so, but I think I could take him. Maybe. I, I think know. you could. A little bit, he's, not, he's not that much taller than me, but about the same weight. Yeah, I can take him. Uh, Tanner versus Rey Mysterio. This is a WWE wrestler. He's a little guy who bounces around a lot. He's pretty cool. He had his eye cut out? Yeah, it was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Like, like for real or like as a joke, Doug? Like it was a gag. They had an eye for an eye match where the the way you win the match is you cut the other person's eye out 
and it was super dumb. I just poke him in the eyes and then run away. <laughs> What's a six nineteen? Uh, six one nine. Okay, so yeah. that is when you he hits you so that you land on the ropes, and then he throws his body between the ropes like horizontally and he turns around and kicks you in the face because you're hanging on the ropes so he like goes through and goes bah! yeah I just poke him in the eyes and run <laughs> tanner versus stitch Ooh, he's small but yeah three thousand times his size he can get pretty crazy i mean he hasn't bitten anyone's arms off but he's probably gotten close mm-hmm so, I'd hate to say it, but I have to give the stitch mm. just because <laughs> he's, he's, I mean, he was designed to be a deadly chaos creating weapon. This next one is might be a bit of a deep cut. I'm curious if you know who this is because for some reason some people don't. But Tanner versus the Noid. Ah, from Dominus? Right? Dominus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was Dominus. Yeah. Dominus. Yep. Um, if you're just going pieces, give me that. Ah, I could take him. Although I think it wasn't the running guy like you couldn't do anything about him. You avoid the Noid. I forget. Literally I have forget no the exact. Clue. Yeah. Yeah, I could take him. Tanner versus Winnie the Pooh. Oh, I got it. I got him. Absolutely. I mean, shopping. no question. Oh, right? yeah, he's all yep. No claws or teeth. This is a bear I definitely could take. <laughs> I forgot that you... I've, I've put you against two bears this game. <laughs> and two snakes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a bear you can definitely take. I like it. Yeah. All right. I'm curious about this next one. Tanner versus Will Smith. Now, as far as fights go, we know that he got in one little fight and his mom got scared. So he moved in with his uncle and auntie in Bel Air. He also slapped the crap out of Chris Rock. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That was quite a slap. I actually got slapped a couple of weeks ago by Easton. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, we were just messing around. It was like it was like at Christmas. I go, we did like our Christmas I got it with them and then like the parent they saw downstairs because they're like hiding their gifts that they're bringing in and mm -hmm. they're just messing around and he just I cornered him and he just slapped me. And I was like and I was in shock. I didn't like hurt, but I was in shock. I'm like, I'm so proud of you, but also shocked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so but Chris the Will Smith slap was hard. I think he'd beat me up. Especially if I took his wife's name and in, in vain. <laughs> all right well that is all the opponents i have for you um i have a few more questions if that's okay yeah thank you for playing the mini game uh tell me if time or budget wasn't an issue what would be different uh i mean the budget it'd be a film in new zealand <laughs> and <laughs> it'd be professionally It'd be better than Rings of Power. I don't know. I think Rings of Power is okay. But yeah, it'd be really well done. And time, you know, obviously. I mean, honestly, if I had like other time, I'd probably like actually, you know, it'd be a full length feature and it'd be, it's, you know, it'd be on par with Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Actually, while we're talking about it, you did get extra time, Tanner Perkins. Why I were you that. four days late, Tanner? I just to I told you before the mini game I had COVID. Uh, I was like dying. <laughs> Do me a favor, rate years one, two, and three as your favorites. Like of my films, or yeah, you know? uh, uh, of your films. So okay. life, pitch meeting, um, and Chronicles of Light. No, three, two, one. So Chronicles, <laughs> pitch meeting, life. Like uh, Chronicles being your favorite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, and yeah. the reason is, I mean, it's, the reasons are obvious. Like, it's my first like real film. Life was like it was very much like I have no idea what to do. Mm -hmm. And then pitch meeting was like the like I had a concept for a film, but couldn't really 
realize it out. But I got to do something fun with it still. So. Like I said, I was just so happy with your film this year because we finally got to see you in action. Mm. Um, tell me a little bit about your voting criteria. What boxes need to be checked in order to earn a Tanner vote? Um, they have to be funny, comedy. Uh, you know, like I mean, they have to be a comedy, but they have to, you know, there's to be good, good humor to them, like humor for the nerds. They got style of humor, and then obviously, you know, I think some action in it. Did you get best actor this year? I did. I was about to say, there's no way you did. Two, two years in a row, actually. Wait, you got best actor last year? Yeah, when um, but it was like by the I did a guest judge choice. I got best actor. Oh, okay. Yeah. But then I got for voting, I got best actor this year. So obviously, best actor, you played the role of a lifetime in Kill Happy. What would you like to happen next? Who do you want to act for? And what type of character would you like to play? I don't know. Acting for would be hard. Like, I've already worked with Zach. Like, he's kind of the. I think he might have peaked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it'd be fun to. I don't know. It's like hard because. I haven't like really seen anyone else direct. I mean, maybe I'd say either Matt Stice or Josiah, probably. Mm -hmm. Is there a character that you would like to play? I mean, if I'm gonna, you know, go for a, a repeat on this win, I do something bold and, you know, interesting. I wouldn't mind playing a character with like split personality and just having basically multiple characters in one. That'd be cool. The PRFF split. Remember that movie? Yeah, that'd be good. If you could have a tag team partner, who would you choose? Probably Matt Stice. Why? I think uh, his films are kind of like, in terms of like tone and are kind of similar to mine. Probably my ideal, like funny, family friendly, nothing like overly crazy, but also like he's just got a very good visual eye. I hate that I keep saying it, but the lighting in his film. <laughs> yeah. Like that dynamic blue lighting that he always has. It's wow, beautiful. Anything that we didn't cover that you want to make sure the listeners know? Um, let's see. Well, I'll say one thing for Kill Happy. It's to be honest, it felt really weird filming those scenes in a church. <laughs> we, were, we filmed <laughs> the office was my church office. And I like I read a script, but I didn't really think it through. But we were filming them like this makes me a slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh, sorry, God. <laughs> Talking about murder in the church. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fine. It Zach out. is canceled. Zach is canceled for making <laughs> his actors uncomfortable on set. No, it was fun. I had a good time. I love working with Zach. Like, I think Zach being the director for that, like, it really, he helped me become a better actor because he helped me guide me for what he wanted. So that mm -hmm. was great. Um, as for my film, yeah, there's not really any Easter eggs per se. I mean, I mean, obviously the references in there was Lord of the Rings, Carcharonia, did a whole scene of Star Wars, and then mm -hmm. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure kind of there at the end. And then DC uh, Talk to close it out. DC Talk, yeah. So music. So the opening music for the opening was from the Lego movie, like the prologue. Like, was it really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I Da, da, da. That's all Lego movie. Um, <laughs> and then, and then, like, kind of the like suspense building music before the fight. That's from um, season two of Cobra Kai. And I, I was kind of like thinking about that when we were filming. And obviously, Captain America, kind of when he gets Mjolnir in Endgame, is when the tra transformation happens and what with that music. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, DC talk. And that was kind of just a reference to, um, to kind of like to us, our group. So the church in the middle school youth group, we do a thing called Wilds. One of the leaders started like wild, the Wild Stallions, which mm -hmm. is part of like, you know, based, Bill and Ted's band, Real to Rickland Adventure. And we've actually done like, we've done like, I think we've done four concerts now for the middle schoolers, just for like, basically like sync concerts. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of like a reference to that. And they, it's like one of the songs they did the first time I did it with them was Jesus Freak. That's awesome. Well, Tanner, thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. This has been the PRFFP, and I'm just hanging out. Hanging out with my family. <laughs>